Instrumenta.com. Hello and welcome to Micro No Limits, where we motivate, teach, and inspire you to live a life full of limitless possibilities. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel to support us. And if you have already subscribed to this channel, thank you. Have you subscribed yet? The only way you can support and help us reach other people and inspire others and help people come out and live a better life is by clicking and subscribing and liking this page so that whenever we release every content, you would receive it. So I'm going to give you a second just to click on the red button down there, which says subscribe. Okay, thank you for subscribing and thank you for helping us. Today we're going to be talking about something really funny. That's just about my awkward moments. Um, the things that happen to me as a physically challenged person that I usually don't dwell on them, but I look out for the humor out of it and laugh about it and get on with life. Because I've come to realize that humor is one of the things that really helps me to deal with my challenges. And it's, um, you know, life in its sense is hard and being physically challenged is even twice harder and so sometimes you if you don't take care you become resentful you want to stay out of um, society you don't want to mingle you want to be on your own because you don't want people to say things that will put you off you don't want people to pass derogatory comments you don't want people to say things that would hurt you and things like that but i realized that the best way to deal with most of these things is to find the humor in them. Sometimes, at the very time, it may not be as funny as it is, but with time, you can just sit back, look at it, analyze the situation, and you probably will find some humor in it, laugh about it, and get on with your life. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to talk about most of my awkward moments. When I was in the UK, um, we, I went to the shopping mall with um, one of two of my mates and I, we went to the Northampton shopping mall and in the Northampton shopping mall they have the streets that runs across the shopping mall. So whilst we were coming out of one of the shops <laughs> there was a police car coming towards us and so when the car saw us crossing I obviously had my crutches and my leg braces on so I was going very slow. And so the police car literally stopped waiting for us to cross. So my two friends went ahead of me and one turned and realized that I was still trying to cross. So he ran towards me and then he grabbed me and put me on his shoulders and he started running along and then pleading with the police that he's sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry. And, you know, the police couldn't help it. And they started laughing because the whole thing was funny. They were literally waiting for us to cross and the guy had lifted me up and pleading with them that they are sorry, they are sorry. We laughed. I laughed. The people around, everybody started bursting into laughter. And, you know, so sometimes you just have to put a spark on things. It doesn't mean they were being derogatory or they were trying to uh, make fun of me, really. It was just, you know, one of those things. And that makes it easy for my friends and myself to be able to hang out and there's no awkwardness around because... If they're able to play and flow around my disability, then there's nothing more um, to be weird or awkward about. You get me? Um, I went with my wife to Manchester because one of my mates' cousin was having a, an engagement party and they were having it in a house. And so when I we got there, we were, I sat down and then they started showing there was a pa, Paralympics on the TV playing and so the people were watching and they were watching the athletes and the people started passing silly comments about the way the athletes were running and moving and you know and all that and then as I sat down I was listening and watching them unfortunately for me I felt like using the washroom and so when I told my wife that I need to use the washroom and the way these people are making fun and making silly comments about the movement of this <laughs> physically challenged people on the TV. I don't even know how I'm going to walk in front of them and get to the washroom. And the next minute, my wife was like, aha, today you've met your meter. Move. 
<laughs> Look, I was pressed, so I had to go. The minute I got up, and those were the times that I had this funny walking, awkward way of moving and dragging my feet as I see if I'm falling and I don't even know what I'm doing. So as I got up and started moving, the people realized that, oh, the whole room became quiet. All the silly comments stopped. Everybody stopped. They didn't know what to say. Everybody was quiet because when, they, when I sat, they didn't know that I was physically challenged. So when I got up, they all couldn't, they didn't know what else to say. I went, when I came back, they had changed the TV from the Paralympics to something else. But, you know, obviously, they were passing a lot of silly comments, which I could be offended by, but I wasn't. I, I, we, my wife and I just laughed about it. I told my mates about it, and we laughed about it in the car. And that's the end of it. It doesn't, doesn't mean I've got to dwell and waste my time and effort being resentful about it, being resentful about people because of that. No, 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 no. I just let it go. We laughed about it, and that was the end of it. A while back, I remember I was coming home with my wife and we were driving on the highway in Ghana, the motorway, and somebody did an illegal U-turn. And so there was a police car coming, I saw that. And so they also did a U-turn and started chasing after the person. But unfortunately for me, they thought I was the one. And so they chased me up till they caught up with me at my exit. And they just jumped out of their car there were about like six, seven of them. And then they came to me, rushed in they were, you know, why did you do that? Why did you do a U-10? Why blah, blah, blah. And I just sat down quietly and I took my um, tow ticket and I showed them my tow ticket that I didn't do a U-10. I just, I didn't do it. And when they realized that I wasn't the one and they had chased me for all these number of kilometers, they felt they had to get something from me. So they turned around and then when they saw my crutches behind me, they were like, who is the coaches for? And I said it was mine. And they were like, you are using coaches and you are driving. Hey, it's an offense. We have arrested you. You are using coaches and you are driving. It's a serious offense. That is what the IGP doesn't like at all. IGP, IGP, So we crack coaches now driving. IGP, Look, the thing, I just couldn't help it but laugh. As I started laughing, they were like, you, are, you think we are joking? We are not joking, no. We are serious. So I told them that we were, listen, I, I don't even use my legs to drive. I use these uh, hand controls. So I showed them my hand controls, and I demonstrated how it works and all that. And then I told them that it is used everywhere in the world. And they were like, no, no, no. What is this? This one. No. You can only use it in the uh, UK and US road, though. By this Agana road there, you can't use it. They don't allow this one on our road. So even to be using this thing, driving to, then we've arrested you. We've arrested you. Look, I had a long night with these guys. It took a friend who came to my aid, and afterwards, um, the whole issue was sorted. In 2013, when I became paraplegic, and a friend was having a christening, at his church. So he invited me, and at the time I was using crutches and leg braces. You know what happens usually at church when the pastor would ask that tell your neighbor that it shall be well with your neighbor, tell your neighbor that, and tell your neighbor that. And this time around, the, the pastor said that turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, whatever the Lord has started with him, it shall be permanent. And so there was a guy who was sitting next to me, and the guy was about to turn and tell me, that I said, my friend, don't try. My friend, don't try. Ah, I'm also trying to get out of um, this, my um, paralysis, and be able to walk. You are coming to tell me that it shall be permanent what the Lord has started. Please, 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 please. Don't try, oh, my friend, don't try. Um, a while back, I went to church, and there was a praise leader leading service, and the guy was leading and singing all the local Ghanaian songs. And I was really into the service, singing loud and backing him. And then just when the guy was about to finish the service, he just lifted up a local song that goes like, Hallelujah. And I was like, really? This song at this time, when I'm the one that is singing loud and backing you and you are sending me Biara, and you just, the, no matter how I am, I will praise my Lord. I was like, wow, this, 
I, the whole thing, I kept laughing. And when I realized my wife had turned around and she was laughing at me, and I, I knew that, no, 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 it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So before I realized, I couldn't continue singing anymore. And then after the service, I went to the guy and I was like, hey, next time when I'm backing you like that, don't try that song again. Send me a me TV and I sing. And the guy was like, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize. I, knew. I said, yes, I know. Obviously, it wasn't like we, he, was, he meant it, you know. It was just, I was just being silly and we all laughed about it. And that was it. I went to the Accra Mall and I was waiting for somebody and I parked in the disabled parking. But you know, in Ghana, most disabled parkings have barricades on them because abled persons would usually park in the disabled parking spot. So I parked in there, and whilst I was parked in there, I realized that the security officer, who was a lady, was trying to get my attention. And when I turned around, and then she said to me that, can you please remove your crutches and show it to this lady for me? And I was like, what for? And she said, well, she also wants to park in the next disabled parking spot. And I'm telling her it's for disabled. And she's asking, why have I allowed you to park? And so can you show her your crutches so she can understand it? And I was like, really? I took my crutches and I tried and I looked back to look at who it was. And when I turned around, it was this beautiful lady sitting in a very beautiful white Lexus SUV. A very brand new one. When I saw the lady, I was like, oh, mommy, so has it come to this? That disability, so I and you make and you pray one. That has it come to this? That disability to you want to share with me? Okay, all right, all right. Come and take my crutches and disability and give me your Lexus. Let's just exchange. When the woman saw the crutches and heard what I said, she was like, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I was like, oh, no, 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 be sorry. You come for my disability and give me your Lexus. Let's just exchange, you know. The, the woman just drove off. She didn't even want to watch my face and see what, 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 what I was going to say. She didn't even want to watch my face. She just drove off and left. As I sat there, I laughed. And it's one of them things. You know, you, somebody could take offense of that. But I just laughed it off. And then I found, I found my way and left there. Um, as for my awkward women, I have loads and loads and loads of them. I remember I went to the Yangshin Mall one of the shops in a junction mall to get something in a shop. And that day, I decided to use my mobility scooter. So as I was scootering slowly in the shopping mall, the security officer came to me that he's sorry that I have to leave the shop. So I asked him that, why? What for? He said, well, my boss says you are using a bicycle and bicycles are not allowed in the shop. And then I started laughing. I knew, wow, there's another one. So I asked him, can I speak to your boss anyway? He showed me the boss. I approached the boss. I was like, apparently, I can't use this here. And the boss was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's company policy. We don't allow bicycles inside. And I said, well, this is not a bicycle. It's a mobility scooter. It's a scooter. Even scooter there, we don't even allow that at all. Scooter, we don't allow that at all. So I realized that it's because the person didn't know lack of education and exposure and all that. So I took my time explaining how the mobility scooter, I told him it's just like the wheelchair. He was like, yeah, wheelchairs are okay, but mobility scooter, no, 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 no. So I even went online, showed him pictures of how it's being used elsewhere and what it does until the guy got it, you know. So sometimes I think like it's about you know, taking time to explain things to people better. People don't understand your situation and they don't know what you're going through. I'm sure when you explain and your situation better to people, yourself to people, it makes it easier for them to be able to relate with you. So that's how you get along with people. Um, I remember when I first went to the gym, there was, I realized there were a lot of awkwardness around the people when I met them you know um, everybody didn't know what I was doing there they were trying to steal gazes and staring at me um, 
others were pretending that they were not watching me whilst they were still watching me um, there were others that when I was getting closer to the, when I was coming close they were they wanted to get lost they didn't want me to they didn't know what to do you know so I realized there was a lot of awkwardness but I knew that was going to happen when I get to the gym and so before I went to the gym I had a plan already so every time I got to the gym I saw and met anybody I would just go like hi I'm Michael what's your name and then they'll be like, my name is that, my name is that. I'm like, all right, mate, have a nice day, take care. And that's it. So everybody I met, hello, I'm Michael, what's your name, mate? And that's how I kept introducing myself to everyone. And with time, we realized that I was a very friendly person. Um, I was easily approachable. So they were able to relate with me. All the awkwardness of them trying to get lost when I'm cram coming with my wheelchair. They want to get lost. They don't know what to do. It all stopped. Now they want to come and help me with my wheelchair. They want to come and help me when I'm doing my exercises. They want to come in. Everybody has become a friend now. And so sometimes when you have challenges, especially if you're physically challenged or you've just become physically challenged, don't dwell on your challenges, on how you feel people would. It's because people don't know what you're going through. People don't understand how and what you are going through. So you need to make yourself available. You need to put yourself out there. You need to introduce yourself to the people, you know, so that you make them feel that you are approachable. And then it will be easier because there are a lot of people who usually want to relate with persons with disability, right? But they are not sure what to say around you and probably what they might say might offend you or they are not sure that... Is this the right thing to say around you or not? Is this the right approach to come to you? You know, so you are the one that you need to come out first. You need to make yourself approachable. You need to reach out to society. You need to reach out to people. When you do that a lot, it makes it easy for the people to also be, what, be able to accept you, be able to accommodate you, be able to relate with you. And then it makes life much, much, much easier for you. Most persons with physical challenges usually complain that abled bodies and society look down on them they don't relate with them and it's it has to do with the two you yourself know how to relate know how to relate with others and others will relate with you as well okay and so that's one of the reasons why we do micro no limits helping you to be able to relate with society to fit into society all right and so as you watch us today and as you watch most of our series, you will realize that every day we help you to be able to relate with society, making your life much, much better and easier. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please, please, please click on the subscribe button and the like bell. And that's the only way you can help support me and this channel so that we can reach others and inspire people. And so God bless you and see you in our next video.